My name is Gurshan Singh. As many of you may know, I was with the Yogi Bhajan Tantric Kuni Yoga cult for 30 years. Now, while I was in the cult, I was very familiar and associated with this Hari Jeevan Khalsa. And in fact, I probably would have considered him one of my best friends there in 3HL. Now, recently, I've seen some very disturbing and alarming posts on social media, which indicate that Hari Jeevan has essentially set himself up as a cult guru. This is very disturbing to me because I know Hari Jeevan's history. And I think Hari Jeevan has a real hidden agenda here to go after his students' money and to develop his own personal power in the yoga community. Now, some of you may be familiar with the fact that Hari Jeevan was arrested on various fraud charges, other criminal charges like money laundering. This was in the year 2000. In fact, uh, Hari Jeevan was known as the toner bandit. There was an article written in the Colorado newspaper which described him as the toner bandit. He was essentially sending out invoices with no product. And I think that Hari Jeevan has not reformed. I think that Hari Jeevan has just repackaged his scams and now he is selling worthless metaphysical new age garbage to his hapless followers. You can see here how his followers put flower petals down for him. They essentially worship him. It's really sad to see, and very disturbing actually, how this criminal who spent time in prison, 18 months to be exact, in federal prison, is now treated like a cult guru. And essentially, he's only delivering worthless, metaphysical stuff to these hapless students. Let's do some real research into Hari Jeevan's activities and his past. And then you can decide if he's really reformed or not. Now, like I said, I knew Hari Jeevan for 25 years, and I never ever saw him teach a yoga class before 2005. He was always involved in these shady business practices, and had a bunch of shady characters that he associated with. There was one attorney that was ar arrested and spent time in jail as well that Hari Jeevan was associated with. I never saw him teach any yoga classes before 2005. Hari Jeevan was involved with this uh, neuro-linguistic programming, which is very manipulative. They use hypnosis and other psychological manipulative techniques in order to manipulate people into doing what they want. I actually was certified in NLP, they call it, and I went to classes with this uh, Richard Bandler and Grinder when they originally started back in the early 80s. Richard Bandler was uh, arrested for murder, and Hari Jeevan took up a good friendship with this Richard Bandler. He um, spent a lot of time with him, and he would tell me stories about how Richard Bandler and him would uh, be in close contact and these very small uh, meetings that they would have, maybe just him with Richard Bandler, talk about how to manipulate people and how to 
um, do these neuro-linguistic programming techniques. So I think this is very questionable about the techniques that Hari Jeevan uses. He also uses his face reading, which is very manipulative as well. And I have had letters from some of Hari Jeevan's ex-students that talk about how they didn't like these manipulative techniques that Hari Jeevan uses. But you can see here how some of Hari Jeevan's students have essentially taking, taken up worshiping him. Even in fact, today is Hari Jeevan's birthday. And they're no doubt preparing all of these garlands and flowers for his presence there. Now, this was very disturbing when I saw this post by Guru Jas, who evidently is one of Hari Jeevan's close students. And uh, you can see Hari Jeevan pictured with her quite often now. She says here, I met my teacher, Hari Jeevan, 10 years ago this month. He is the reason anything slash everything happens in my life. Well, if that's not an indication of a cult, I don't know what is. This is not healthy. And it's clearly delusional thinking. Hari Jeevan is not what he appears to be. He may be doing some good but there's a lot of hidden agendas in Hari Jeevan's teachings, as far as I'm concerned. These are some more of these metaphysical nonsense. She says here, this is the first lunar month on the Tibetan calendar, the month of the teacher's miracles. So you can see this is the kind of metaphysical nonsense that Hari Jeevan is projecting. Now I encourage anybody who wants to know more about Hari Jeevan to really investigate these counts, these indictments and counts against Hari Jeevan. I've put a link to all of these documents that I acquired from the Colorado courts, and you can read up on all of these frauds and all of these different things. It was a very elaborate scheme. It went on for many years, and it wasn't just in Colorado. There was a lot of stuff going on in California as well that Hari Jeevan had these phone rooms set up, these boiler rooms as they called them. And as I said, Hari Jeevan was eventually known as the toner bandit. And now he's the yoga bandit. He set up an elaborate corporate st structure where he was at the top, but he designed this thing so that he could not be located. And he set up attorneys, he set up straw people, all kinds of people so that he would be in the background and wouldn't be known and laundered money so that he could get the eventual profits from it. What I want to make clear here is that it wasn't such some simple, um, you know, one afternoon he thought he would send out some invoices and, and uh, get some money. This went on for 20 years or so and was very involved. And if any of you would like to know more about this, please write me. Please call me. I will do my best to give you my first-hand accounts about what Hari Jima is like. It's really sad for me to see how Hari Jima is bilking these innocent yoga students. Now, here's that, this article about one of the attorneys that Hari Jeevan was involved in. He was eventually, this attorney, this Lawrence Miller, was eventually arrested on some far, fraud charges of his own. So you can see here that Hari Jeevan was involved with a lot of sh shady characters. And here's Hari Jeevan dishing out more of this metaphysical nonsense, pyramids and all these magical powers, telling people that... Uh, It'll heal them or that will make them feel better. It's all in your mind. If you want to feel better, you're going to feel better. But Hari Jeevan, in my opinion, is not really delivering anything that is worthwhile. So he goes off and he gallivants around and, and he does his own thing here. Hari Jeevan is supposed to be a Sikh, but he does his own weddings. 
He's shown here doing his own weddings with um, him as the priest. And no city could have ground sob there. This is completely against the uh, Sikh code of conduct for Harijivan to be doing these kind of uh, weddings as, a, as his own priest, essentially, is what he's doing. Now, I want to point out here how Yogi Bhajan even went against Harijivan. In the year 2000, when Hari Jeevan was arrested, he was living in West Los Angeles. And his wife, now ex-wife, Tejkar, you can see her down there at this uh, wedding in the right-hand corner there. Uh, she was doing all the transcripts of Yogi Bhajan's tapes. And Yogi Bhajan had all of the tapes removed from Hari Jeevan's house because he didn't trust Hari Jeevan. And you can ask Tejkar, you can ask Hari Jeevan. This was a fact. They were all removed when Hari Jeevan was not at home. They took, the 3HO people took the tapes, took them all away. They didn't want to have Hari Jeevan to have anything to do with them because they knew how manipulative Hari Jeevan was and still is. So that's one fact. The next fact is, is that when Hari Jeevan was arrested, he was removed from the Khalsa Council. Guru Amarkar was the general secretary there at the Khalsa Council. She had him removed from the Khalsa Council, this Hari Jeevan. And he was never um, reseated on the Khalsa Council. So 3HO and Yogi Bhajan definitely knew what Hari Jeevan was up to. Those are facts. You can ask the 3HO people about Hari Jeevan. And I think it would be a good idea for you to investigate that. Now here are some of Hari Jeevan's students who are preparing for his birthday today. They're covering up these Gurmukhi Gurbani lines there on the wall with these Buddhist prayer flags. They combine all kinds of other religions, all other kind of practices, and they say they're Sikhs. They use Sikh names like Singh, Kar, and Khalsa. Yet they do all these different practices. I believe that Hari Jeevan is getting him un into all this because he doesn't want any discipline with his followers. He wants to manipulate them into his cult and get them interested in him personally and not get them involved in traditional Sikh teachings. Because in traditional Sikh teachings, we have a discipline. We have a code of conduct. And Hari Jeevan just flaunts that and uses these students to get the power and the money that he wants. Here's one of his students' prayer altars here. And you can see here this picture image of Guru Nanak Dev Ji down there in the right-hand corner, which is the first Sikh Guru. It's very small. And then yet there's picture of Yogi Bhajan, Ama, Tejkar, ex-wife of Hari Jeevan there, which are much, much larger. And this is this hodgepodge of New Age thinking these Yogi Bhajan people and these Hari Jeevan people now are involved in. You can see it's a lot of these New Age people who come to Hari Jeevan's classes. And he beats this gong and he tells them, oh, this will be healing, this will be great for you when it's just a bunch of metaphysical nonsense. He's just doing the same thing as sending these invoices out with no product. Instead of being the toner bandit, he's now the yoga bandit. He gets his students to get donations for him. You can see here. Now I'll also point out, the last time I talked to Hari Jeevan was in 2009. We talked about a lot of things that had happened in the past. And he clearly didn't want to talk about it. And he didn't want to talk about why he, now he was getting into these metaphysical sales. He told me, he said, I'm in the yoga business now. And then hung up on me. So that was the last time I talked to him. And clearly, what I take from that is his emotional outburst and saying, I'm in the yoga business now, 
meaning that he wanted just to make money from the yoga. And he tried all kinds of things when he got out of prison. He tried doing market trading, tried to do that, and he was a failure at that. And so he got finally into this yoga business. And you can see how, here how his students treat him like a guru. Notice this big dollar sign there on, on this uh, Harijivan student's uh, around her neck there. You can see that big gold dollar sign. She's got a tantric necklace on that's uh, sold by this other Harijivan. They make money off of that too. So they're just preying off of these innocent yoga students. They treat Yogi Bhajan, or they treat Harijivan, he really is a little sip of the tongue there. He really is kind of like Yogi Bhajan now. He tries to put himself up there like Yogi Bhajan. And I'll point out too that about I'd say 90% of his students appear to be women. From the social media posts I've seen, you can see here that most of his students are women. And um, I can't judge what he does with these women, but it's clear that um, he has a lot of women students. Some of the posts indicate that he might be in a romantic relationship with some of them. I don't really know. But it's, it doesn't seem like a healthy situation. When you really look at Hari Jeevan's past and this cult that's developing around his um, personality. Now, I will point out, too, again, about how he takes his students to all kinds of other religious functions, especially Buddhism. It seems like he's taken them to Dharamshala, to uh, there where the Dalai Lama is, and all these Buddhist uh, statues. Uh, to me, again, what this indicates is that he wants to get his students into activities and practices that have no discipline. Buddhism is very loosey-goosey. And um, from what I've heard and seen, it's very uh, loose on the idea of having sex with anybody. Uh, there's no morality attached to having sex uh, from what I've heard about Buddhism. So this may be one reason why Harijivan is getting his students into this Buddhist activity. I don't know for sure, but it's just speculation on that. Anyway, you can see here his students worshipping these Buddhist idols. And again, Harijivan um, uh, with the women students. Now, I want to point out Tejkar is there on the left. That's Harijivan's ex-wife. And she's got the glasses there. She's there on the left. And uh, I'll put the cursor there. Harijivan does all these classes with her. And uh, it's a very weird situation. I'm not sure why Tejkar goes along with Harijivan after um, she divorced him uh, back in 2000 when he went to prison. But um, Harijivan remarried this Aaron, but I haven't seen her... Um, in any picture since 2012. And, but Tejkar continues to teach classes with Harijivan, and I think maybe it's because Tejkar wants to kind of hold on to Harijivan's coattails. That's just speculation. But Harijivan kind of carries on with all of these other women, and uh, you can see here in all these pictures, he's with women in every picture, looking at them and... Um, well, I'll let you decide. Seems like with this woman, he's developed sort of a special relationship. We'll let you decide what that involves. But it doesn't seem healthy. It doesn't seem the way that um, a so-called spiritual teacher should carry on. Anyway, I hope that you investigate Hari Jiman some more. And... Uh, Get a copy of my book. I'll send you a free copy. Um, not trying to sell my book here. But it does have a lot of good information about the Yogi Bhajan cult. And I talk specifically about my relationship and uh, uh, association with this Hari Jeevan. So, um, like I said, thank you for your time. And I hope you investigate Hari Jeevan some more and decide for yourself what he's up to. Why could you call Sa? Why could you keep a day?